Welcome back to section 3.2, part 2. Let's take a look at the example on page 180 in your textbook about SEC football. And this is the same scatter plot we've been taking a look at. Now we've got both the scatter plot and the residual plot along with the prediction line y hat s, the standard deviation of the residuals, and r squared, the coefficient of determination. Our first order of business is to calculate and interpret the residual for South Carolina, which scored 30.1 points per game and had 11 wins. So remember, we're trying to predict the number of wins, so that 11 is going to be our y value, what actually happened when they had 30.1 points per game. So we're going to use the prediction line, plug in the 30.1 points per game. That's going to give us our y hat or our predicted value of y. That when we plug in is 9.40 wins. We know that the residual is y minus y hat, so we're going to do 11 minus 9.40 to get 1.60 wins. Now that's the residual value for when x is equal to 30.1 points per game. That's part A. Now this is saying if the residual is positive we ended up with a uh, predicted value that was lower than the observed value. Okay, So South Carolina won 1.6 more games than expected based on the number of points 30.1 that they scored per game. Let's take a look at part B. Is a linear model appropriate for the data and explain? And in order for us to do that, we need to take a look at the residual plot. If you look back at the residual plot, you will see there's no detectable pattern. And what that means when there's no detectable pattern is yes, it is appropriate for us to use a linear model. Now, the next part of the question says to interpret the value S, the standard deviation of the residuals being 1.24. And this is what we would say is the typical error, or when we use a regression line to predict the number of wins from the number of points per game, we expect our prediction to be off by about 1.24 wins on average. The last part of the question is to interpret the value r squared, which is 0.88. And this is where we go back to that definition of percent variation, which is accounted for or explained by the use of a linear regression line. So we would say approximately 88% of the variation in number of wins that is accounted for by using a linear model relating wins to points per game. So 88% of the variation is accounted for or explained by the linear model. All right, that leads us to the next topic, which is interpreting the output that we get either from a mini tab or sometimes we'll see this in software packages that allow us to do linear regression. Some use Loggers Pro. So this is a block of data that we're gonna get. You can see the output kind of has a bunch of different numbers on there. Some of it we're not going to be interested in yet for a few chapters in the short term. We're going to always notice that where it says coefficient the num or and constant, so constant indicates to us the y-intercept. In that coefficient column, the next number down is going to give us our slope. So the other numbers that we notice here are the S, the standard deviation of the residuals, remember we just interpreted that a minute ago, and our R squared, which is our coefficient of determination. In order for us to find R, we just need to take the square root of this number and use the sign, positive or negative, that we see for the slope. So we would be able to construct our y hat equals a plus bx line using that information. There is another way for us to come up with the equation of the, the um, prediction line and that would be using summary statistics. So if we have the standard deviation and the means of the x's and the y's we can use that. Now just FYI, these formulas are on your formula sheet that you get 
during the AP exam. So don't worry about that. This is not formulas that you need to memorize. And what this allows us to do, remember our equation is y hat equals a r y intercept plus bx. So in order to come up with our b, which is our slope, we can multiply the r, which includes the positive or negative sign, so that's the correlation coefficient, multiplied by the ratio of the standard deviation in the y's to the standard deviation in the x values. Once we've got b, then we can use the mean of the x's and the mean of the y's and the y-intercept to come up with a, which is our, I'm sorry, we can use a slope to come up with our y-intercept. All right, so some things that we need to remember. Correlation and regression are super powerful for describing the relationship between two variables. You'll see these are used in industry and in a lot of experiments that, that we'll study later on in the year. The thing that we need to remember is that even though we have an explanatory and response variable that sometimes we just assign because there's no specific relationship that we can detect for explanation, the, the first thing that we really need to do is assign one as explanatory and the other as response. And that again could be maybe based on what we're predicting or it could be because we do think one, the change in one would explain change in another. Okay, so that's the first thing. The distinction between explanatory and response variables is important in regression. It is going to change. You can see that the regression was done by, in part A, using miles driven as ex the explanatory and price for, as the response, and then we reversed it in B. Now, we ended up with the same R, and that means the same R squared we ended up with a totally different equation though. The numbers are totally different. They're both negatively sloped, so that part of it is not going to change, but the numbers will change. So we need to be conscious of that. We need to be very conscious of which one we're assigning to explanatory and which one is response, and know that even though our R will not change if we reverse them, our equation will change. Our residuals will change, and therefore our standard deviation of the residuals will also change. The next thing that we need to remember is regardless of what r value we end up with, r and r squared, until we actually look at the shape of the data, we cannot say whether the relationship is strong, whether the pattern is linear. We really need to look at the data. There's no other substitute for graphing the scatter plot and being able to make a determination based on what we see. So all of these happen to have the same r value and the same least squares regression line. So you have to see to know that only in number one would a linear model be appropriate, appropriate or, or uh, graph A, I should say, not graph one. So you can see they all have the same r, they all have the same regression line. You, some of you may remember we did this lab in class, but there's only one in which the linear model is appropriate. And remember, we also have to look at the residual plot in order to determine that. Number three, correlation and least squares regression lines are not resistant. When we take away child number 18 and we just look at this cluster of points, we may see something very different. Child number 18 actually strengthens this value of R. Child number 19 would detract from the value of r, or the correlation coefficient, remember, is r, because it's off the pattern. Now, 18 is also off the pattern in terms of uh, it's way further away, but it actually would strengthen our value of r. So with all 19 children, our r is negative 0.64. When we take away child 19, which is off the pattern, you can see it strengthens our r value. When we take away child, or, or I'm sorry, it without child 19, we have a stronger R value. And when we take away child 18, we have a much weaker R value. So just pay attention. Our lines aren't super, super, super different, but the values of R are definitely different. And one thing you need to make a note of is how different the slopes are. So when you take away a specific point, be able to kind of have a little bit of a prediction. What's going to happen to one end of the line or the other end of the line, depending on where your point is that you're removing? 
or adding in for that matter. But correlation and least squares regression lines are not resistant. They're going to change when you change the points that you have, when you add in a point or take away a point. Okay, so let's talk about outliers and influential observations. We just looked at examples where we take away a point or add in a point and we saw a big impact on the line, or I should say a big impact on the correlation coefficient and an impact on the equation of the line. When we have a point that is uh, on the same, uh, in the same direction, that point is going to be influential. And that's basically what we saw here with child number 18. They're extreme in the x direction, but no other points near it. That point is going to strengthen our value of r. And if we have one that's off the pattern, that's actually going to, having that point in it will also be influential, but it's going to weaken the value of r. So just, again, keep that in mind. We've hit all of our objectives, and you have some uh, many examples to look at in your textbook. You also have uh, plenty of exercises to do to keep you busy and to practice these topics. If you have some questions, bring them to class.